Well, you know, we've been frantically running around trying to get organized and get everything ready, but it was a very positive energy because we are so looking forward to the start of the new school year and haven't had time to go through all of our pictures. So my art teacher said, just give me your CDs and I have an idea. So she decided to take three shots from each event since last September and uh, blow them up and make them all black and white to, sh to show the, the tapestry, the unity. And when I went to pick them up at Costco, the guy said, no, I don't have that order. So of course, you know, one more thing. I, I, and I, I've become so, dis so ready for that kind of response. I said, oh, okay, let me call her. And she said, I, I, I really did, I put it in. And uh, I said, she said, why would I know when to pick them up? I said, well, you know, there was one more step after that. You have to confirm that you want it. So she, she goes and checks, she goes, oh, I didn't do that. So I go back and I say to the guy, she's, she's just sending it now. And he says, oh, I see that, that they're coming up. He said, I'll, I'll start printing them. They'll be ready tomorrow. So when I went the next day, it was another guy. I went in the morning and he goes, oh, they're, they're not gonna be ready for a while. That was a large order. So I could see some of the pictures were on a, a shelf. I said, I think that's part of it. Can I just see what they look like? And it just so happened that the first day of school shot was right on the top. So of course I look at it and I immediately start crying. <laughs> and he goes, oh, was this the school in Edison that burned down? He goes, I'll have them all done really fast <laughs> for you. So it was like, it really touched everybody's lives. You know, as soon as people made a connection to it, they wanted to be part of making us whole again. So um, doing this, I think we laid them out yesterday so the staff could see them all. I think it really helped them just take a walk through our last year and bring us to the start of the next one. And really looking forward to seeing this again today to, to start off our 2014 school year. So. thing I, f I have always found in Edison is the collegiality of whatever professional group I am part of and the elementary principals were no different from, from that once I came on board and uh, they were very receptive to you know being there even if it was just to listen and commiserate and make you feel that okay validate what you were feeling was was okay. I really love teaching and sometimes as an, a lot of times as an administrator you are so far removed from the actuality of being in the classroom and having that opportunity to to take over so to speak because this was kind of funny I came from Lincoln and uh, one of the Lincoln families happened to move to James Monroe at, to coincide with my start there as principal. So when I opened the front door of the, the school, the, the Pearson kids were the first people that I saw it. It was like, oh, somebody I know, you know? And I guess it was a reciprocal kind of feeling. So it was that, okay, you know, we can do this. We can, you know, we, we, can, we can move forward, both of us, and, and, and start fresh here. Um, you know, Monroe is a real community school, so there were loads. I just remember lots of parents and lots of kids and lots of new faces and, and, and just, just Try, trying to be more of an observer to, to watch how everybody interacted than actually being the, 
person everybody was coming up to. Most people didn't even know who I was. You know, there was no big hoopla about, you know, your name got posted in the Board of Ed minutes and people, for the most part, you know, waited till that first day to see uh, who you were, what was going on, that kind of thing. And it was a small school, too. In the beginning, I think, I think we were a little over 300. So, you know, the school has changed dramatically in, in the time that I've been there, too, as far as size. It was a community, they wanted to stay as a community, they, they were about the celebrations of the community. You know, the big, the big ticket item, I, if I recall, was Harvest Eve was always the first or second week in October, so that was what they were hitting the ground. They were already in motion with, with getting that up and running and they just wanted to make sure, they wanted to feel secure that they would be able to continue doing the rituals and traditions that were part of uh, James Monroe that made them special that's what that's what you knit your your fabric together on that's what you weave the community the spirit those those rituals which sometimes we tend to and sometimes they can get in the way you you know you have you want to say this is a school you know our priority is, is academics We're, we we need to provide these children with the best possible education but we can't short circuit or poo poo that very very important piece of the fabric the the the, the com community building because these kids will all go out in to serve this community or the greater community in some way so that social interaction and even being part of coordinating some of those events is it going to be extremely important in their informal portfolio as they get ready to be real real world citizens the golden rule was really in effect that we treat others the way we want to be treated and that's something we worked very diligently on in that building throughout other programs we had through the clubs that were carried on so that was always underlying whether it was a blah day on a Tuesday in February or a highly energized day where we were in the midst of getting ready for the, the school play that that philosophy was what carried us forward as far as professionalism, uh, without a doubt, the most professional building I've ever been in. Teach teachers uh, to substitutes, to uh, colleagues, to whoever, always make themselves available to help and make sure that people have everything that they need. It's the most uh, I've ever seen with respect to collegial planning, where they actually sit down and map out their lesson plans. And it's not because, oh, I'm going to do math and you do social studies and we'll make it easier. It's really about making the curriculum as comprehensive as possible and using the best possible instructional practices. And, the, and they just, they are so lovely. They are just such wonderful, wonderful people. And um, they have made everything so much easier and better for, for the kids. Showing the importance of, of helping others was always intertwined, you know, was always one of those themes that carried itself through no matter uh, what the content was that we were specifically studying. So the kids got very excited about doing different things. In fact, we had two fundraisers going on. We were in the midst of in March and they were very concerned that those things were not going to go forward because everything had been lost. So yes, but did it change after March 22nd? Absolutely. Did their whole concept of what it meant to be community-minded and giving to others change? Without a doubt. We were celebrating our 50th anniversary. We did not want to have to do a big dog and pony show 
for the 50th anniversary, in addition to doing the play, which takes a tremendous amount of work. But I somehow got involved in this conversation, and Aladdin was one of the plays that was mentioned, and I thought of the whole magic carpet kind of thing, and that being a good way to tie in the last 50 years, you know, do a, that was the original thought, do a magic carpet ride through the years and, and start the play. So that's how it became a lot. It was just, you know, going back to the world where James Murrow started and, and moving us forward and then, you know, da da da, start the play and have it all done in one. And, and it did work. There's so much energy that goes into making something like that successful. We had almost 300 children in that play. I mean, when you think about the scope of um, management and organization and just working all those out, especially because we don't do it in our school, we do it at the high school and you don't get there till the day before so you don't know what it's going to look like. And it might have been a little anticlimactic because then there was that, it got me thinking about, well, what am I going to do now? And that's when I actually was thinking about retiring. I mean, it was, my mother had passed away right at the start of the school year. So, you know, you, there is that uncertainty of what the future does bring. So what is it that I am passionate about that I want? Do I want to continue in education or do I want to try looking at something else? Now? Very, it was just a very strange rest of the year. Just little quirky things that were, were, were happening. And it was almost like somebody was saying, pay attention, pay attention. But I, I, I didn't heed the signs that there was something so large looming on the horizon. The only thing I remember about March 21st is I was really tired and decided I wasn't going to do any work home, so I left just about everything in the school. <laughs> all of my, all of my Vera Bradley bags and my coach bag, everything that had stuff in it. I think the only, I did take out my iPad. I had my iPad home, but everything else was there. Oh, and I had my testing manual for New Jersey. Yes, those were the two things I had. And that was that was not a joke when I said that. At, I forgot I said that at Edison High School. Those were the two things that I had taken out. I thought if I look at anything, because we had had the training that that week, uh, I'll see what, ch what has changed this year. And I was pretty uneventful aside from, from just going home and crashing and not wanting to do anything, which basically carried over to the next day. I, I don't even think I got out of my sweats and uh, until the knock on the door. Edison Fire Central reporting a general fire alarm activation. Seven Sharp Road at James Monroe Elementary School. Responding engine one, engine two, engine nine, rescue four, car eight.
was working in my husband's office, our house is a, is a very old house in Edison, and um, it's very in, well insulated. So if somebody's trying to politely, like Cindy, who's an extremely polite person, get in, knocking on the door, I'm not going to hear her. And I was in his office working on the computer, so I was. it was like I was totally isolated. I could have been on an island, on another planet, someplace totally oblivious to the fact that people were trying to urgently contact me. And she, she finally found me and she said, hurry, we have to go, the school is on fire. It's, she helped me, I remember her helping me tie my, my shoelaces for my sneakers and her, and her husband had pulled the car up. My son, who was in New York City, texted me and said, your school is on fire. So now I'm thinking, okay, other people know this and I haven't even gotten there yet. We pulled up to the back of the school, to Montview, so we were up on top to go down to walk down because I figured that was going to be the best way to get close. And the whole middle wing was involved. I know I felt my legs go out. I never passed out, but my legs did go out from under me, and poor Cindy's husband ended up trying to hold me up. And we were there for a while, and I kept thinking, okay, the fire, tr the fire was, trucks were all over the place. They're gonna, they're going to get this out. It's, it's just going to be the middle wing, and, and then we just watched it start. It was just a very slow death because, the, I mean, what time did we get there? Seven something? We were there till after one in the morning. So it was just a, a constant and always hopeful that, well, it will just be this area and they will get it out. And it will just be this area. And then finally at about one in the morning, the gym went up. Up until that point, I, as much as I watched the destruction happen and, and the classroom after classroom go down, I really thought, okay, there's still half a school there. And then when that, well, all of a sudden, you know, they had shut the hoses off, they, they were really sitting dormant, and the gym just whoosh, and that, that, then I knew. Then I knew, it, you know, something had died. It was. It was gone. So then your mind starts going to, okay, what do we do now? Where were we going to go? What, you know, how is school going to happen? I immediately went to the administrator. The emotional piece, once I got my legs back, <clears throat> it was very emotional as teachers came, as people came, but my head was already moving forward. And I, and I think that's one of the things that happened throughout this experience. You learn to compartmentalize things and put them aside because you have to deal with something else. So the something else was we have to get a place to to live. We have to find some place to become a school again. I had no idea what was going to happen. I don't even know what the expectation was for me, from me at that point, what my role was in, in what laid out. I guess Dr. O'Malley called Amory and I was just told to be at the Ed Center the next morning. And in the interim, I, I received some phone calls. I started looking, thinking about Catholic schools in the area that had been closed as possibilities. So when I got to the meeting, I had already known that um, the college had offered a facility and that St. Cecilia's was empty. Um, I, I made it very clear to the board members when I got there that 
It was extremely important to the life of James Monroe that we not be separated. And um, by the end of the conversation, we were given permission to go look at Middlesex County College. And um, I just remember looking at these two buildings that were totally gutted, thinking, okay, we, we can fit here. It was, it was, um, it was a relief to me to, to see a physical space that I knew we could make work. We are, we are fortunate that although we had a travesty happen in our town, the most important thing is no one was hurt. And that is a very good thing. James Monroe Elementary School is home to 487 students, 62 staff members, and it is a kindergarten through five school. James Monroe Elementary is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. As a school community, as you are aware, we've been devastated by this event. However, although we will no longer have the physical structure to attend every day, we still have 50 great memories of a great school, a great community. Those memories will not be lost. And I will stand here this evening and tell you that we will rebuild this school because this community deserves it. The last time I had a standing room only crowd in this setting, where were we? We were here celebrating our 50th anniversary at D Disney's Aladdin production. Reminding me that our theme for this year on back to school night with our video was a whole new world. I had no idea what I was going to say. I, I thought about it a little bit. Um, and then I was so emotional that I thought that I should write it down, which I don't usually do. And I did put it on my iPad, and then my iPad started scrolling. And I, I was like, now I know why people don't write things down. But um, you know, I, my point was to keep it as short as possible, but l uh, reassure the parents that their kids would be OK, that we would be OK, that James Monroe and I meant what I said. James Monroe wasn't, that was a building. That was a building. And you think about people who say those kinds of things, and you never think you're going to be, be the one issuing those words. But we were all safe. We were all going to move forward. And that's what we had to cling to. That's what we, that was how we were going to rebuild. No matter where our journey takes us in the next few years, so goes our school community. So although not planned, I look forward to Wednesday, the start of a whole new world, chapter two. out to the uh, superintendent to ask him if there was anything we could do and of course he said I need space uh, so we came back and regrouped and thought about it and we have these two buildings here that we have just vacated because they're to be de demolished for a new building and I thought that might be space that the district could use so we called the district back and uh, they came over and we took a look at it and now our facilities people are going to try and make some magic so we can get ready for the kids on Wednesday. How's the whole process been going? It's fine, it's fine. Everybody's being very cooperative and you know anything that we can do to help is certainly, uh, we're part, all part of the community. The college was extremely supportive. When we went back the next day, they had already painted everything. Doorknobs were in place, it was just, 
an amazing transformation in, in less than 24 hours, and they were going to have it ready for us by Wednesday, which when you look back now, I think, how the heck did we pull all of that off? I think it's really positive that the community is coming together. Uh, I've seen a lot on social media, on the regular news media, uh, people offering assistance. And, you know, Middlesex as a community college, uh, this is part of what we do is to assist the community in times of need. Yeah, we've been pretty busy the last few days. Uh, just like everyone else, when you, when you when there's children involved and people that need to a place to uh, learn, we, we always uh, put our uh, best foot forward to do whatever we can. Um, our, my maintenance group is, uh, we, we, we're uh, privileged to have a bunch of talented individuals. Uh, we do have painters, we do have spacklers, we do have licensed electricians, plumbers. So uh, it, it, it was our honor to help out in this situation to do something uh, for the children in our community. It's uh, coming together um, fast and fabulously, and it's more than we can ask for. Yeah. The district, Middlesex County College, has been wonderful. We're just so proud to be part of this community. Surrounding districts, uh, so much support. Parents, uh, people all across the uh, country, country, I feel, have yeah. been and so I've, supportive, and right. it's so overwhelming. And the way Middlesex has just pulled together and, you know, got to set up making this, like, days. our own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. definitely. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Not bad, right? No, great. Thank you. They he told he told us we could do whatever we wanted because the the bill is coming down. Yeah. We're excited for Wednesday to get here. All the children. Um, that's what the school is. That's what James and Rowe is. So we're just in a new home, but it's still the same family. It's humbling. It's humbling how much people give us and are willing to give us and do for us. It's, uh, I've never been on this end of a tragedy before, and uh, it's just very humbling. We're just extremely grateful. We want to thank yeah. you from the bottom of our hearts. Yes. It's very heartwarming, all the support we're getting, and we really, really appreciate it. You know, they, here they pull desks out so that um, the secretaries each have their own space here. There's a desk for me, there's a desk for the nurse. We got the phone lines are already up and running, the internet is already up and running. Um, you know, we can't. It's, it's just even hard to talk about because I, I know that tomorrow this will be James Monroe's school, without a doubt. can do this we can do this we've got each other we can do this in the interim you had the whole behind the scenes uh, e events happening where the district got involved and I believe it was Cindy who at the time was still a supervisor who reached out to the CRTs to see if we could get um, if the rest of the children in the district could somehow reach out to us through artwork and I have to say that that one effort went a million miles in, in uplifting definitely the staff, but the kids too. Um, having those buildings decorated when we walked in, anybody who walked in would say this is a school. And our kids were just over the top about what they walked into that day. Oh, there were a lot of tears. 
I, I actually went through both buildings taking pictures because I wanted to make sure I memorialized them. And reading what some of them said through the lens was just, um, just overwhelming. Um, and it came from the kids. So if they're telling you, you're going to be all right, you believe it. You know, it's going to be all right. And they meant the words they put down on the papers, and and it, they made the place look beautiful and between the work that the college did and, and the decorations that the, the CRTs put up. There was no question that our children were walking into their classrooms. And with that much support, and maybe that's when it hits you, how much, how overwhelming the magnitude, the, the support, the generosity of spirit of everyone who wanted to help us in any way that they could. And you know, those kids were doing those little drawings in their seats in their classrooms, not realizing what the greater impact would be. So that's why it was important to make sure the pictures were on the website right away so that teachers hopefully shared them with their classes so they could see how they transformed they really did transform those buildings into a wonderland. I just remember it being so very, very cold that day and windy. Um, the college was there on force. There were a group of the kids themselves, the Middlesex kids who made a sign welcoming our kids standing out there in that bitter cold as each bus pulled up. Um, there were, uh, of course, the media was, was all over the place, but they were back up on the hill. They, they, they sort of let us be on our side of the street. Um, and then the buses started to arrive. We went inside and for the very first time we did our morning ritual together and that was pretty amazing. 500 children and staff members and all of the guests that were there um, just watching us do our normal morning routine like nothing had happened. And I think I said something like welcome to college to start it off. Welcome to your They were all so excited and we had the meter sticks with the teachers names just like we do every first day of school so it was another first day of school and everybody was lined up appropriately and and then um, our music teacher John Pecarelli led us in the Star Spangled Banner and it was just pretty wonderful. Oh, say can you see by the And 
you were just so happy. They were waving to the media. <laughs> they were happy they were on TV. And then we went in the building and they saw all the beautiful flowers and drawings. They were just, they were kids. And it was their first day of school. And they were happy to see their friends and so very thrilled to be with their teachers again. And these are children who love being in school and understand that their teachers really do love them. And it was gonna be okay. You know, I keep saying that, but that was that's what would keep happening. We'd go through these periods of doubt, but then realize it's going to be okay. And that first day just flew by. And then the first time we were together formally was the spring concert at Edison High School. We had a big crowd there. We, we, we filled the auditorium and that was the first time that I heard this song that my music teacher, John Peccarelli, wrote. He wrote it almost immediately, and the kids were given it pretty soon after that to, to sing, but I couldn't bring myself to listen to it. Um, that song, that will be one of those defining moments for me in this, this whole experience. The way those 100 children sang that song with, with what they poured into it, the emotion that came out of their mouths, um, was just absolutely beautiful.
it's been a little overwhelming because, um, as I've said before, while we were at the college, it was really living day to day. Now I have to be more global in my thinking. And I think if there's one thing I'm determined to do is make this building our school. I can't think two years down the road. I don't know where I'm going to be two, two years down the road. James Monroe School, as of September, will be at the old St. Cecilia School building. And we, we will make it our own in every way possible and not just as a temporary holding place because first of all, structurally, it's probably gonna be the soundest building we've ever, ever been in. Um, it's gonna be the biggest building we've ever been in. They're gonna be staff members who are probably gonna be a little upset when it's time to leave this facility because they're going to by get used to having the spaces that they have. So no, I wanna make sure that this, this place is really our school in every conceivable way. Good morning. Good morning. 